All right, there's too many of these videos. I didn't realize adding this this section added a sixth video. That's too much. So final section is on common diets. Just really quick. There's not a lot of material that I'm going to quiz you on from this, um, but there are some common diets that that are still popular today. Have been around forever. You may not realize it, but fiber, high fiber diets have come and gone since the 1930s, uh, 1940s rather. The low carb diet. You know, started in the 1970s as the Atkins diet. Now it's the uh, the keto diet, and the and the whole paleo eat like a caveman. That's been on and off. I think it was eat like a caveman. That book came out like 25 years ago. I so they come and go. These these diets really do come and go. Um, the low carb diet is based on the idea if you eat a low carbohydrate diet diet. You trick the body into thinking that you're starving. The body goes into ketosis and you start burning fat, not just to burn fat like you would normally, but then to make ketones to, to fuel the, the brain. Do people, so do people lose weight on this diet? They do. Uh, when you eat a lot of fat, and I believe it's like 60% of your calories from fat, that keeps you full. If you eat more protein, that gets you full. And so when they look at people who are on the keto diet, they actually eat less calories. Um, so that's good. And, it, and for folks with blood sugar issues, there appears to be some benefit. For kidney disease patients, this is a whole area of research. I'm not a doctor, not a medical class, but these low carb diets appear to have some benefit for renal patients. Disadvantages. You can't live off bacon fat. We've talked about this in, in the heart disease lecture. Um, saturated fats have all sorts of issues. Eating a lot of fat raises your cancer risk. That's one of them. Um, it's nice to go to the bathroom. Eating a diet that's you know, very low in carbohydrates can imply you're not eating enough carbs or fiber to maintain regularity. And, and finally, if you wanna exercise, that generally requires some carbohydrate. It's easy to lose weight, as I said. It's hard to keep it off. One way you keep it off is you maintain a consistent daily form of exercise. It's hard to do on the Atkins slash keto diet. Paleo, eat like a caveman, right? So that includes eating anything that's not like bread or modern grains, nuts and seeds and root vegetables. And, and raw meat, that doesn't really mean raw meat, but um, look, is there an advantage of a paleo diet? You're probably eating extremely clean. They call that clean eating. That said though, grains are a great source of energy. Whole grains have plenty of fiber. They've got other vitamins and minerals in them. Just removing grains from your diet, there's no scientific basis for this. Humans have been agricultural for 10 to 12,000 years. We are not cave people. We are agricultural people. If, if the world is a Petri dish, our Petri dish had wheat and barley and rye inside the growth media. So I think the reason why it works for a lot of folks, and by the way, I've known a lot of folks on the paleo who drink beer. That's clearly not a paleo food. Um, the reason why it works is people clean up their diet a lot. It's just a clean diet. Um, if you can do it, great. You know, I just don't know if it's it's really scientifically causing someone to lose weight other than they're just eating really clean. Uh, fasting and time-restricted dieting. So either fasting one day, eating the next, eating within a window. Um, there's some advantages to this. Uh, we've seen that. Uh, I saw, there's a paper out by an Italian group looking at uh, weightlifters who ate in a, I think, a six to eight hour period. Uh, just, you know, whatever they wanted to, but they didn't eat outside that window. The theory is you're letting hormone-sensitive lipase turn on, right? So you're not crowding it out with carbohydrates, which raises your blood sugar, which raises insulin, which turns off your, your enzyme that releases body fat to be burned by muscles. Um, in, in a group of bodybuilders, this time-restrictive dieting had no effect on their performance in the weight room. So if, if it's a way that you're using it to time when you eat and try to help you lose weight, um, it may work for you. There may not be any disadvantage to it. The fasting part is a little harder. So no, so time restrictive dieting is hard to do in a chaotic life. Agreed? Agreed. But but I think most most nutritional researchers and dietitians would say 
if you can eat between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. and it works for you and you're eating healthy, they would have no disparaging comments about that. When people are fasting on one day versus another day, I think that many dietitians would be secretly uncomfortable with that because that might lead to a deceiving, uh, excuse me, an eating order, an eating disorder pattern, where now people are restricting food, and they're and they're they're using this restriction, this fasting, as a behavioral compensatory mechanism. So I think that's why people are a little uncomfortable with the fasting diets, but the time restrictive diets, uh, kind of being pattern wise not eating before you go to bed. If you're not hungry in the morning, then not eating because you're not hungry. Um, you know, there's some evidence suggests that it doesn't have any negative outcomes. It's just hard to do in a chaotic world where, I mean, you're gonna go to a party and they offer you a beautiful piece of homemade cake at eight o'clock at night. Like, ah, I don't wanna eat the cake, I'm, I'm on a diet. Uh, I mean, you know, you only live once and you know, your your grandmother, your your mom makes a beautiful piece of apple pie for the holidays. Who knows how long they're going to be around? You may look back and think, geez, I wish I had that piece of apple pie, right? Uh, do you want to look back and say, I wish I got in that, I wish I got in the Camaro? <laughs> That's a line from Transformers. So there are a lot of other diets out there, the Mediterranean, the vegan, the carnivore, the grapefruit. You know, are these really diets or are they just like trying to control nutrients, right? Juicing, juicing and cleanses are not diets. They're not considered diets. They're considered actually treatments because all you're really doing is processing foods in a different way. If these kinds of meal plans allow you to exercise, lose weight or keep it off, and they work for your pattern and your lifestyle, then maybe they do work for you. They just may not work for everybody. And some of these, some of these extreme diets are hard for some folks to maintain and they can be expensive. Um, vegan diets should not be expensive, but you may find many vegans who only eat organic vegan products. That's gonna be expensive. Clearly a carnivore diet, eating only meat, uh, Joe Rogan, good luck for your colon, by the way, well, that's gonna be fairly expensive. So, you know, these diets come and go. There's always a diet. Um, I think for most people, cleaning up your diet and having a, a, a logical pattern that makes sense for your lifestyle is just the easiest thing you can do and may have simple, simple improvements for your health and your weight.